A batholith is a large emplacement of plutonic rock. It forms from cooled magma deep in the Earth's crust. The Idaho batholith is a mass of granitic plutonic rock covering around 15,000 square miles of central Idaho. One might ask, how did the batholith get there? Around 50 million years ago, magma formed under the surface of Idaho. It was pushed upward, forming mountain ranges. Some of the magma made its way to the surface. And that cooled rock is what we know today as the Idaho batholith. The Idaho batholith is formed of Cretaceous and granite and grandiorite rocks. It is comprised of two sections the Atlanta lobe and the bitter root lobe. The Atlanta lobe is older and ranges in age from 100 to 75 million years old. And the bitter root lobe is about approximately 85 to 65 million years old. These lobes in the batholith form through compression, melting, and heating of the subducting plate called the Falarin plate. Also, during the formation of the Falarin plate, the basaltic magma chambers form causing melting overlying the overlying the form of a granite composition. This crystallization formed very, various different types of rock types and textures. The rising in magmatic plutons caused the uplift of the large mountains at the top of the Earth's surface. The Ocene chalice rock, volcanic rocks rest on the surface uncomfortably on the middle depths of the Atlanta low, the bath lip. This draft demonstrates this paleogene uplift. Along with these paleogene uplifts, basaltic colonnades of the Idaho Bathlip are another major contributor to the shape and structure of the Idaho Bathlip today. These colonnades were formed through erosion as basalt erupted in fissure eruptions. Along beside the river, these eruptions formed, causing the older rocks to be on the, on the top of the, the canyons and the younger rocks to be on the bottom of the canyons. The Salmon River is also another contributor in the Idaho bath lift and in the shape that is formed today. Along with the Chalice volcan Volcanic Range, you can find various different types of volcanic rocks and granite rocks formed through erosion and deformation of a subducting plate called the Falarin Plate. The Falarin Plate was an ancient oceanic plate which began to subduct under the North American Plate forming the Rocky Mountains that we see today. The oceanic crust that was subducted underneath the lithosphere was eroded away during the heat and pressure of this compression. We can still find slabs of this oceanic crust of the Fallon Plate in a few sections of Utah, Idaho, and Colorado. The remaining Fallon Plate has been eroded away and it's been eroded away. The Bitterroot Lobe is anywhere from 85 million years old to 65 million years old. During the Cretaceous period, plutons were intruded during a regional compression. Later, plutons of foliated muscovite biotite randodiorite were intruded also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did? You did? Fossil rocks are in the ground tonight. They've been down there for a really long time. Yeah. They contain the history of life. Woo. They've been down there for a really long time. Clap, clap. Fossil rocks are in the ground tonight. Oh. They've been down there for a really long time. They're the shit. They are literally on the ground. Yeah. Take your hammer out and break that. The Atlanta lobe is anywhere from 100 million years old to 75 million years old. The core of the Atlanta lobe is biotite grandodiorite, and the eastern side is muscovite biotite granite that is around 76 to 72 million years old. 
The western side of the lobe is composed of tonalite that is 85 to 95 million years old. Most rocks ain't moving that fast. The sediment's evidence like a present telling us of the past. Fossil rocks are in the ground tonight. They've been down there for a really long time. They contain the history of life. They've been down there for a really long time. Fossil rocks are in the ground tonight. They've been down there for a really long time. They are literally on the grind. Take your chisel out and flake that. Due to radiometric dating, we can restrict the age of the batholith from anywhere between 180 million years old, which is the late Triassic era, to 45 million years old, the Eocene era. The dominant age of emplacement was early to middle crustaceous. The age seems to decrease going from west to east. Sagebrush all around where the deer and elk do roam, this place I may call home. Where the flatlands stretch for miles, and the mountains touch the sky, and the sun always shines. The Idaho Batholith's rocky terrain provides us with a beautiful topography. The Batholith is bordered by the Northern Rockies, Middle Rockies, Snake River Plain, and the Blue Mountains. The Batholith provides us mountains, canyons, eroded stream beds, and valleys. The terrain and seclusion of the Batholith makes it difficult to build in major cities. While there are small towns, for resorts or fishing, you will not find any paved roads running north to south. Some of the natural resources provided by the Batholith include fishing, crop production, grazing, mining, logging, and recreation. Where the snowmelt forms, cold mountain creeks flowing through the valley down below. I was standing neath the pine trees on a bed of wild grass. This place has captured me, wildflowers I can see. There ain't no place I'd rather be. 